Today, we're going to be speaking with Matt Medved, CEO at NFT Now, who Yahoo Finance recently ranked as one of the top 10 most influential figures in the NFT space. Matt, so great to see you. Thanks so much for joining today. Great to see you too, Matt. I'm really happy to be here. This is going to be great. Absolutely. This should be an interesting one and definitely um, a little bit different than some of the other guests we've had in the past. And before we dive into all things NFT, we'd love to hear a little bit about your background and the road you took to, where you, to get you to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. So I come from 15 years uh, at the intersection of media, culture, uh, specifically in music prior to Web3. Um, you know, in 2015, I founded Billboard Dance, Billboard's dance electronic music brand at Billboard, grew that into the leader in North America. Uh, after that, ran Spin Magazine as editor-in-chief, um, exited with the sale of that in 2020, and then was actually running content at Modern Luxury, the lifestyle publisher, uh, before I was pulled down the NFT rabbit hole by my good friend Blau, who's a DJ producer and uh, a kind of a pioneer in the music NFT space. And, um, you know, for me, I'd always been dabbling. I started dabbling in crypto back in 2013. During the 16 to 18, I was really focused on, like, how does this technology empower musicians and, like, help create a better, like, uh, like music industry model. Um, and so NFTs for me were that missing puzzle piece where it was technology I'd believed in for a long time, finally disrupting fields I'm actually passionate about. Uh, and in a way that has the potential to empower creators. And so Ooh. went full headlong into it and... Uh, founded, uh, co-founded NFT Now uh, in January 2021, and it's been a, an amazing ride since. Yeah, and we're, we're going to dive into NFT Now. Before we do, though, quickly, um, a big point that you didn't bring up is you're also a DJ as well. Oh, yeah. Um, you spun <laughs> a big festivals and clubs. So talk to us about how you got started being a DJ um, and how that intersects with what you've been able to do on the professional side to date. Yeah, it's a great it's a great question. So, you know, growing up, I was always writing creatively and I was also making music. I was in bands growing up, you know, some some probably a uh, lackluster punk bands and the like. And, you know, but it was it was always fun. And and in college, I started DJing um, because one of the things I loved about DJing was I've always said DJing is an exercise in empathy. Like the best mm -hmm. DJs think about their audience first. It's yeah. not about what I want to play. It's about the intersection of the music I like and have at my disposal and the experience that's going on around me and, and making it a great experience for those people. And um, I just found that like really uh, like amazing to think about um, and also found it like the independence of it versus being in a band, you know, not having to be reliant on like four other people and their schedules and um, was really, really inspiring for me. And, you know, one of the reasons why I think that we were able to build Billboard Dance the way we did so quickly and gain the, the, the trust and, and the credibility with the artist community was the fact that I spoke artist languages. You know, like when I met Martin Garrix for the first time, it wasn't like a QA, and a it was us nerding out about synthesizers, you know what I mean? And like things like that. And so um, I think that that also extends into the NFT space as well. It's like, you know, understanding the artist experience and being able to speak to that from an, a genuine and authentic place. Um, I think that that's really powerful. Um, one of the things I found in dance music is that it, it's largely covered and, uh, and covered by people who have no idea how it's made or, yeah. or how it's performed. And so being able to bring that kind of knowledge to the table, being able to build those uh, much uh, deeper connections with artists. And also, like I've always said, you know, from from Billboard Dance to Spin to, to NFT now, I've always like been a curator first and foremost, you know, always having that ear to the ground, like being wanting to be what, what's on the next big thing. And I think part of being able to identify talent early is understanding the medium and being yeah. like, wait, how did they produce that? You know, having a, a being able to like dig into that. And so that has served me well in the NFT space as well. And, and it's something that that is a real passion point for me. It's funny you say that, Matt, because there are a lot of parallels between behind um, both EDM and the NFT space, electronic dance music, NFT space. A lot, a lot of haters kind of say, oh, DJ, just press a button on stage. You're not really doing anything. And a lot of haters in NFT say, well, you could just screenshot it. It's very similar. It's like not understanding everything that kind of goes into it. And just kind of shrugging it off because it's new, yet you have this entire generation that are fascinated by both of these tracks. And totally. I can definitely see the parallels. Totally. I mean, going into like a legacy institution like Billboard and being the champion for dance music at a time when uh, the editorial leadership there was pretty old school rock, uh, yeah. was definitely swimming against against the current and, you know, definitely had to had to rely on data to make my points and, and be a champion of it, be an evangelist for something that, what you know, that people didn't believe in at the time, but ended up being the fastest growing thing. And so I do see some parallels here with this as well. And um, and so, you know, I'm comfortable in that role. Like I like being I like the underdog. I like being uh, poor. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And and like when you have conviction in something and you feel it uh, the way that I feel it uh, around the future of Web3, around the future of this technology and its ability to empower creators. It's the same thing I felt about dance music. It was inevitable to me. It was just a matter of like how it would play out and, and when, not if. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's it's uh, 
it, it's a it's a role I actually really embrace because um, I think people always fear what they don't understand. And that's why that's why we've always been really at the forefront of like welcoming new people into the space, arming them with the tools and the education they need to understand it and succeed. And um, yeah, being like being being evangelist for, yeah. for something we really believe in. So in 2021, uh, you were the became the founder and CEO of NFT Now. Maybe we should start first by hearing a little bit about what NFT Now is and yeah. what the thesis behind you starting that company was. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so. Uh, NFT Now, we are um, the number one trusted source in the Web3 space, uh, omni-channel media company. Um, we are also, um, you know, we're at really at the forefront of the intersection of, of content and culture and like, and bringing, um, you know, the creatives into the space. I think that our mission from day one has always been to empower the creators of culture and to bring this technology from niche to mainstream. There are a lot of outlets out there that are very content to preach to the crypto native choir. That is not us. We want to help convert the masses. We want to bring new people in and we want to make sure that when we do so, they're getting good information, that they're being set up for success, that they're not taken advantage of, uh, and, that, and that ultimately um, they're able to understand like the power and potential of this technology beyond simply like you know speculation and, and the markets. And so um, we are also uh, building what we like to call the future of tokenized media, um, which is really exciting. And, and part of, and I, well, I'll dive into that a bit deeper, but one of the things I think is important to understand is that from day one at NFT Now, we always wanted to do things differently when it, with regards to the media model. Like I saw from my time at legacy media brands, just how broken the Web2 media model is. And from day one on nftnow.com, we have not had programmatic ads. We believe programmatic ads misalign incentives and and actually like incentivize this sort of like perverse like clickbait race to the bottom. Yeah, we have not had a, a one programmatic ad, and we also uh, we believe in privacy. We don't track our users. We don't have pixels. We don't have cookies. Um, we we really stand by those principles, and yet we've been able to still thrive as a as a modern media brand. Um, and for us, it's really about pioneering a community centric media model. And um, you know, in March. Uh, with the launch of the Now Pass, which is the uh, our NFT membership pass that gets you access to the Now Network, that's the foundation for everything we're building for the future of tokenized media. Um, we really believe that this technology has the power to incentivize, like re kind of realign incentives, reward participation, and really um, create deeper relationships, not only between um, you know a a uh, you know audience and publishers, but really on like predicated on the idea of community where, where our community members can actually share in the value that, 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 that they're creating, that they can actually contribute to co-creating um, the content that we're making. And, and it becomes this really amazing kind of symbiotic relationship. Um, and we, we've seen the power, the transformative power uh, of, of Web3 in, in other industries. And so we've been really focused on how can we build a better media model through this? And uh, we're, we're well on that path. So somebody was kind of dropped um, into right in front of you from outer space, right? And they missed the last three or four years. And they asked you, the person who, you know, is at the forefront of this, why are NFTs so important? What are they? Yeah. And where are they going? What would you say? I, yeah, without I, I could I could give them the very long version. Or I could give them the very yeah. quick version. I think we want to say you quicker version. Answer that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you answer so, it? So what I would say is this: obviously, you could get into like you know the technology, the sure. immutable ledger transactions. But ultimately, I think the, the important thing to understand really is just at the end of the day, NFTs allow a level of digital ownership over content that has not existed before. And that is really powerful because it unlocks a lot of different things that were just never possible. All of a sudden, digital artists can build collector bases, you know, because you can actually prove digital ownership of a of a digital art. Or artwork. even a physical item, correct? And Which a physical item, yeah. exactly. You can track, like you said, you can have tokens that are, NFTs can be assigned to um, to, to physical items as well. And, and, and you now have a transparent, immutable, record of their movements. Uh, and one of the things I think is really important to understand about this technology is it allows you to bypass the centralized platforms and, and you know, the sort of uh, everything that comes along with them in a really powerful way. So it's peer to peer, so truly. Right. And so it's decentralized. And so like, for example, um, we, we came up in, in this, you know, like in the Web2 era where all these big centralized tech companies and platforms um, have access to all, your, all the data. They're not sharing that data. They're, Amazon, they're selling that data. Amazon, eBay, you name it. 
Exactly. Facebook, Google. Exactly. You're at you're at the behest of their ads and their of their algorithms, of their ad models and the like. Whereas with this technology, you can circumvent that, you know, and it enables what I would tell this 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 alien, as I say, it <laughs> enables um, far more equitable uh, economic models, especially for creators. Um, in Web two, uh, Web two is all about building audience as it you know as a means to an end to indirectly monetize as a middleman for brands that's the programmatic ad model for uh media that's the that's the you know the influencer model for individual creators you know with brand partnerships and the like ultimately you're in a likes and comments economy right and you're using it to try and build enough of an audience to be able to monetize that um by getting big brands involved cool but with web3 if there's something a lot more powerful at play, because something that's more powerful than just audience is community. Audience is aware that you exist. Audience may see you in the feeds. They may, they may click your things. They may buy your products. They may even attend your events, but ultimately it's a one-way street of a relationship there. Yeah. Whereas with community, they actually want to see you win. And part of the reason is, is that they actually have a stake in that. All of a sudden, uh, by owning, for example, your favorite musician's NFT or by owning, for example, um, you know, an NFT that offers you membership to uh, an organization uh, or a group that you really believe in, um, you can actually share in the value that's created by their development. And what's amazing is that it, it has a transformative effect because what it can do is it can unlock a different level of loyalty. I always say in 2023, every single company is a media company and every single company is a loyalty company, whether they know it or not. 100%. And so what's amazing is this technology is transformative on that front because now instead of just being a fan, you feel like a shareholder. Instead of right. just being like an advocate, you can be an ambassador. And what's amazing is it enables what I think was the original promise of the internet. We all know, you know, Kevin Kelly's, you know, 1000 true fans, the idea that like, you don't actually need millions of fans to have a sustainable career as a creative. Yeah. All you need really is 1000 true, true diehard fans who are going to pick up what you put down, who are going to buy the ticket, take the ride, buy the merch, buy the album, stream the, you know, the, like, you know, go, drive to the show, all that. The issue is that in web two with, all of these centralized platforms who didn't have an incentive in allowing creatives to reach their full audiences, uh, you know, they gatekept it. And they, right. they, they actually were like, hey, guess what? You have to pay us to reach even a fraction of your organic audience. And you have to like fit into this whole like algorithmic ad based like- yeah, We put like to the master as part of that as well exactly. when it comes to, right. Exactly. Yeah. And so what it did was it created a, an unsustainable climate, which is why you see it's like, they often say, for example, I come from the music industry. There's no middle class in music because you either, either you're Drake or Justin Bieber or like you're kind of struggling, you know what I mean? And like, and part of that is because of that scale. But for example, what I think is really powerful about NFTs and Web3 is they allow you to directly monetize with your community and they allow you to build community as a not as a means to an end but as an end in itself and they have really powerful mechanisms to allow you to share in the value that you create over the yeah. long term right because there's models yeah. where you sell an, an nft and then you get a royalty every time it's sold in the future right. too yeah. there's, there's the there's that's possible depending on the platform as well yeah and that's really powerful uh and amazing thing is like you can take what's called a snapshot and by taking a snapshot, you can immediately see and get access to all of the wallets that carry that, that are holding your NFT at that time. And you can directly reach them. You could send them another NFT. You could send them something that's, hey, guess what? I want you backstage at my show. I want you to have the meet and greet. I want you to have the uh, I want you to have the, um, you know, the, the it's like the fan club membership. Um, and that creates this incredibly powerful level of connection where you're not reliant on you know, the algorithms and, and, and the like of, of centralized players. And right. so there's, there's an incredible potential with these at play. And one of the things that I would also say uh, to, you know, this alien who, you know, eyes may be glazing over at this point, but you know, <laughs> hopefully has figured out that this is important and they need to learn more about it, is that while we have seen certain use cases take off and command the headlines like digital art, digital collectibles, yeah, cool, eye-popping sales, I know those are the ones that get the headlines, those are just still scratching the surface of the potential for this technology. We're big believers that NFTs, Web3, this, this technology is going to fundamentally redefine how creators and their communities create and share in the value, in value together. And what will be amazing is 
it'll it'll like right now we're talking about it as NFTs, we talk it about it as Web three, all this. It's just going to be the next it's the next evolution of the internet, and people are going right. to be using it whether they know it or not. Yeah. Um, and I would I would just like I would tell that alien as a closing point. I would be like, look, one thing that's important to understand is that we are all part of the last generations to grow up without digital ownership from day one. So future generations are going to grow up owning things digitally. They're going to own things physically, and they're going to have none of the hangups that our generations have about that. They're not going to be like, how do I hang it on my wall? They're not going to be like, right, click, save. They are going to own these things, and they're going to appreciate them for their own unique strengths and appeals. We're already seeing this with Gen Z and Fortnite and, Fortnite and Roblox and the like. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's like they get it more than we do. And, and so, before that, we saw it with Farmville. Right. Like ultimately there was digital currency, even, you know, as as long as the internet really existed. A hundred percent. And so NFTs are that, that, that critical component uh, for like, for ownership of unique items, whether that's, whether that's a piece of art, whether that's a piece of music, whether that's a deed to a house, whether that's a deed to a car, whether that's, you know, um, a membership, a membership, exactly. Um, And the, the use cases, like are going to like what's amazing is like one of the reasons I know we're still early is that um, people still speak about NFTs like a category instead of a new medium that transcends every category. Yeah, that, it used to be like the same way with digital or social. Yeah. It used to be its exactly. own category, and now it's sort of part of the way we communicate. It's dial tone, right? And exactly. That, it, had to and jump and cross the chasm to get there. Exactly. And each of these categories, these different use cases, as the markets mature, we're going to see they all, they all have different creative and consumer priorities at play, um, just like they do prior to Web3. And we're going to start to see, I think people are going to gain a much more holistic understanding of this technology's potential when, they are, that when things aren't all being lumped under one category and like, you know, monkey JPEGs and like, you know, yeah. things like that are commanding the, the spotlight. So Well, and, and often when you have, you know, something new that gets introduced to culture and society, you kind of have this adoption curve where, you know, at very early on, it becomes a frenzy and everyone's talking yeah. about it, then it implodes and then the real work begins. Yeah, um, and then that. over time, it becomes something substantive. It happened with the internet itself, the dot com boom and bust of 2000, right? We're seeing it happen right now, happen with crypto and more specifically with, with NFTs. Talk to me about that boom bust cycle, how, how it was for you to kind of live through that. Cause I'm sure there, it wasn't always easy. And, and I know you have conviction. I can tell yeah. by the way you're talking that you believe in it and what needs to happen with the technology itself for it to gain mainstream adoption to get through to the other side. So that's a great question. Um, one thing I'll say is this, this past, this past cycle was my third crypto cycle. So I started dabbling with Bitcoin in 2013. Why? Uh, uh, I was I was living in Milan. It was really cold. I didn't really speak great Italian. And so I was spending some time on Reddit and like stumbled across it, bought the exact top of that market, uh, you know, sent the Bitcoin white paper to all my friends. It crashed like two weeks later, but I just held on because I believe it always happen that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but, you know, what's funny is I, I believe in the tech, but it's not like I necessarily had full conviction that it was coming back at that point. Like I thought that was interesting. Could have just been like a weird flash in the pan on the Internet, you know, um, then it was 16 to 18 with the rise of Ethereum where I was like, oh, yeah. OK, I was on to something. Yeah. And this time, I also see the potential beyond just the financial side for this to also empower creators or to be able to impact culture. It was still early, especially on the music side. Um, so when it came back around this time, I was like, I have seen this movie before. Here we go I already again. know how right. it ends. And this time it is like back in those times, it was magic Internet money. This time it's art, music and culture. And you don't bet against art, music and culture. So uh, that's how I had the conviction to jump in. But one thing we have to remember is that a lot of people bought their first crypto to buy an NFT, especially from the creative industries. Yep. And so they are where I was after my first cycle. They don't necessarily have conviction necessarily that's coming back because they haven't seen it before. You know, they can go look at the charts and all that, but like, you know, you have to live it to really to experience it. So one thing that's important to understand is that bringing that perspective, myself and my co-founder Alejandro, we both have been through booms and busts uh, bulls and bears before. So we, we had that in mind. Like we always knew, like even in the froth of like 2021 uh, and, you know, in the top of 2022, like we knew like winter is coming. Right. And so we prepared accordingly. Um, so that was, that's really critical, but you know, it is challenging, especially, um, you know, when you see, for example, um, you know, search volume go down or you, or you see, for example, um, you know, obviously we weren't necessarily expecting, uh, the implosion of FTX, you know, bad actors, like bear markets always shake out bad actors. That's obviously yeah. on a really big, big level Absolutely. that obviously like shook the, the industry to its core. But ultimately, 
I'm a big believer that the bear markets are actually extremely healthy for us. Um, bear markets are for builders. There are, there's less noise. You're able to focus on what you really believe in. Um, and the people who are showing up every day in a bear market are the ones who truly believe in the space, who aren't motivated by short-term financial game, but are, but are actually trying to build the future. And that's actually one of the reasons why we launched the Now Pass uh, in the midst of a bear market. A lot of people asked us, they were like, you know, you could have made a lot more revenue off of it if you had launched it in a bull. I'm like, yeah, but like, I want to build a values-based community. If we're going to build a community-centric media model, this is that first, this is that first case study, right? Like this is, this is that, like, if I'm going to, if I'm going to super serve a community, if I'm going to show up for them every day, it better be the real ones. It better be the yeah. ones that like, that actually believe in the space, the ones who believe in what we're building, the ones who are there. Um, I always say Web3 rewards those who show up. And, yeah. um, and so now's a great time to be building what we're building. And I'm not going to minimize the challenges of, of the market conditions. But, you know, one thing that we have full conviction on is like, you know, it, it, this is the like, digital ownership is the future. And this technology is the key to unlocking that. And one thing, you know, that we're seeing is even though uh, many, you know, like retail, like mainstream attention, you know, has shifted away from Web3 and all that. Uh, on the business side, we're seeing tons of big brands exploring the space. I just saw uh, a report from Coinbase that uh, more than more than fifty percent of the Fortune 100 is is developing blockchain based initiatives. Yeah, it um, takes time. I mean, I work yeah. with all these big companies, and I know it takes years and years for them to even just get through legal to understand the data and privacy concerns, and to actually build the technological infrastructure to integrate into their systems. So it's going to take time. The big brands are always who's less to join the party. Totally, totally. And you know what? When they are, we're here, we're ready to welcome them. You know, we, we yeah, help bring yeah. a number of big brands into the space. Like for us, we're always like, you know, we it's, we want to see this space succeed. And so we want to see big brands enter the space and we want to see them do it credibly. And we want to see them do it the right way. And we want to see them do it in a way where um, they are building long-term uh, connections with their community. Like one thing that's important, I always say, like, you know, that it's really important is you have to rethink what you normally think about, like, a go to market strategy or anything like that. Like most people in, in web two and before it's like, you know, it ends with the sale in web three, it begins with the sale and yeah. a sale, an NFT sale is not an end. It's a beginning of this incredibly powerful connection with your community. But that, com that connection is something that you need to be prepared for. It's something that you're going to need to nurture. And it's something that you're going to need to make sure that, that you have a long-term perspective, right long -term perspective on. And so, you know, I, I really welcome the, the big brands that are coming in now. And I welcome the ones that are going to come in later. And, um, you know, we're, we're here to help them too. I think one huge opportunity is when you talk about you know, a lot of the things you're talking about are mainstream consumer habits that have been around forever and they just need to transport to a new medium. Like loyalty has yes. been a thing. People yes. have always wanted to buy digital music. I mean, they did it over, over iTunes at the beginning, right? So it's, and now they, they rent the music versus owning it. But basically the, the notion of digital ownership has been around for a while. I think one thing that's in the way of NFTs really gaining that mainstream consumer adoption is just sort of the form factor and the process of buying an NFT. Like, I don't know what MetaMask is. Like, I'm pretty technologically savvy, probably more so than 99.99% of people on earth. Um, and I jumped on the first time I tried to buy NFTs and I was confused. Totally. It's like, where's my money? What's MetaMask? Where, what's that difference between that and Coinbase? And for somebody like you, it's intuitive because you're in the space, but it should be as easy as buying something on Amazon. And it's 100%. not. It and I think in, until that happens, you're not going to have consumers really adopting NFTs. I get if I own this BMW NFT because I own a BMW that I can get the BMW's concert at Coachella. Like I get all that stuff, but the process of getting that NFT is, I think, what gets in a lot of people's way. Sure, and and, and know what? Fully. Agree and why right is now. that? There's just, there's right now it, the the UX the, the UI like like the tech hasn't caught up, and that's okay. Right. Like you know, like it, that's we'll, we'll we'll know we've reached that point. You know, when we have that, the, the iPod moment, you know, when yeah, it's like exactly. 500 songs. Right. Lime wire like was really pocket. hard to deal with at the beginning yeah. too, right? When, right. Like we need to, right. We'll get to the point where we're not talking about the tech, but we're talking about what it enables for consumers and like that's what right. amazing things are created in that way. Like, you know, and, and so like, that's the, like, we're, we'll get there, but it takes time. Right now yeah. there's a lot of friction to get from interest to onboard. But like right. you said, like it is this new medium. And like you said, like what's, what's really interesting is when we think about in the media context, <laughs> Because, you know, like for us, it's like, you know, NFTs are just are just one area of Web3 that, that we focus on. And like, ultimately, we're really focused on the idea of tokenized media. And what does tokenized media mean? 
Yeah, what uh, does that mean? It involves. So I want to get back yeah. to the now pass, which is yeah. tokenized media. So let's let's totally. shift gears to that sure. and talk about what is tokenized media and yeah. then how you build on top of that idea for the now pass and what the now pass is. One hundred percent. So yeah. I think one thing to just understand, like you know, is that like technology has just always pushed storytelling forward, right? Like from the Gutenberg printing press, like creating like the information revolution to like the advent of the internet. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, and, and then, you know, suddenly we get, we get mobile, uh, smartphones and then everything has to shift mobile, you know, so print to digital to mobile. Like you remember all of these, like, well, well not, not, not the Gutenberg printing press, but you, you yeah, know, these other, the other yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, you know, the other transitions, right? Tokenized media is the next frontier. It's so yeah. clear. Um, and what's amazing is, um, not only will this medium like, is this a, sh a shift in medium? But it actually, like I mentioned, has the ability to actually change the longstanding relationships between publishers and, and their audiences and communities, right? And so one thing I just want to say, too, is there's, I, have, I think there's two buckets to tokenize media. There's the tokenization of communities around media, which is what I've spoken to a bit around, like, how this is different and what the potential is. And that's what we're building with the Now Pass and the Now Network. And then there is also the actual tokenization of media, as in putting articles, blog posts, podcasts, videos on the blockchain for verifiable authenticity, on-chain provenance. We, we're, we're building at the forefront of both because we think they're both really critical. And one thing that one development that has really um, brought the, the latter into focus, because we've been talking about tokenized media for a while, and sometimes people are like, you know, I, I'm not sure if I understand this. Ever since those viral photos, those AI photos of Trump uh, getting arrested, you know, went viral and fooled, you know, tons of people, um, it, it, it's, it's been incredibly clear the need for tokenized media. Uh, be, then we saw, you know, AI photos of, uh, of a fake explosion by the Pentagon wipe billions off the S&P 500, right? Like, yep. this is not going to stop. AI will never be less sophisticated and uh, less sophisticated than it is right now right? Like full stop. It is only going to get more sophisticated, is only going to get more powerful. The disinformation and the deep fakes are only going to get more realistic. And there's going to be a real need to be able to track the authenticity of media, pieces of content, understand where did they come from, understand did they come from trusted sources, understand that journey, um, and be able to do that all on chain. And so that is an area that I think is incredibly critical to, to combating AI disinformation. Then when we think about the tokenization of communities around media, that's the now pass, that's the now network, that's where we start to think about, cool, what's this community-centric media model? How do we, how do we shift like, an understanding of, of what a media company's role is uh, in 2023? What we have a saying at NFT Now um, that we believe media companies shouldn't serve you advertisements, they should serve you opportunities. And that's something that like, we've really worked to embody by tapping into the incredible network that we have, by tapping into you know, the amazing artists and builders and creators and, and um, you know, executives, collectors, you know, founders that are part of our community and realizing that like, we can actually super serve this community. We can give them, a, you know, there's, the, there's the stuff that, that mirrors you know, all of you know, you know, kind of membership in Web2, like exclusive content, exclusive access, exclusive access to our events, things like that. You know? But where it gets really fun and interesting Interesting is when we start to think about loyalty and we also start to think about rewarding participation. So one of the things that gets really interesting with the Now Network is we are actually building out this whole reward system. You'll be able to earn XP points in exchange for consuming our content, sharing our content, contributing your own content to be published on NFT Now. Um, and ultimately sharing in the value that that creates and being able to then like trade those XP points for like exclusive rewards that tie into all of our partners, like through our network. Um, another really critical part, we now can also decentralize content creation and curation. Like this is part of progressive decentralization. So one of the things that we're doing is um, starting to open up some of our, our curated content series to be community curated content series. Um, and so like, for example, like at the end of our first year, we did something that most media companies don't do, which is we asked our audience what we could be doing better. What would they like to see more of, you know? And we actually got a really resounding off, uh, answer. People were like, you know what? You do a great job supporting artists. You do a great job covering artists, but mostly the established ones, they're like, rising artists need love too. And there's no real way for like rising artists to get, you know, to get the, the support right now. We said, great. So we started a, a franchise called Next Up. Next Up is our rising artist franchise. 
um, it's been great. You know, we've been ahead of the curve on so many amazing artists and it's become a really important platform, but ultimately it's still a very centralized process. It's me and my, my writers and editors coming together, deciding which artists we're going to spotlight each month and, and then giving them, shining that light on them. But ultimately like what excites me about web three and this technology is being able to bypass gatekeepers, not create new ones. Right. And so one of the things that I'm really excited about is being able to open up net next up to our community. They're going to be able to vote fully on chain with what's called token curated registries, TCR models, and be able to nominate, uh, vote, you know, and, and have a say in which artists get this recognition um, and be rewarded with these XP points in chain exchange for doing so. So not only are they incentivized to help, you know, support the artists they believe in, but there's actually a direct incentive in terms of like coming back here. Um, I think that like, you know, we've always said it's like the now network will be built over time, not overnight. Yeah. Um, but ultimately it's, it's really about um, showing that we can succeed, uh, you know, outside of this like programmatic, you know, clickbait race to the bottom. Well, it sounds like you're, it, it's a culmination of, of loyalty, your media platform and a community that you're bringing together. That's right. All together. Right. right. Yeah. A hundred percent. And you know, like we're a, we're a, we're an open book. You know, we've done we've done 5.2 million in top line revenue over the past two years without a single programmatic ad in media, you know, and and I think that's really significant. And I think it's just a glimpse into the future of what's possible uh, when when you double down community, when you actually create content to serve your audience rather than an algorithm and rather and when you understand how you can leverage this technology to actually, I think, foster and create the deeper relationships that we all want to see, because here's the thing. Like Matt, you know the power of media. Like it goes beyond just like a business and a commerce. Like this is this is the marketplace of ideas, yeah. right? And largely, it's become this incredibly polarized like series of echo chambers. Yeah, I mean, I was about to say yeah. it, it's in desperate need of reinvention right now. Exactly. And and look, we we both come from media. Like legacy media is not going to come up with a solution on their own, right? Nope. Like you know, like they're they're just trying to stay afloat right now. Legacy and companies, ran, uh, you know, rarely do, and especially traditional media companies are really hurting right now. So it's not yeah. going to come from them. And so that's why it's going to come from us. Yeah, you know? and that's what we're working on. Very and, cool. You know, and and so like for us, it's like you know, to those who are listening, we're always like reach out. You know, whether you're whether you're a brand interested in in learning more about about this technology and Web three or coming into the space, if you're uh, you know a marketer who's trying to figure out like what that what that looks like for you, and if um you know if we could be helpful, we'd love to be. And you know, I, I think that. Uh, it's been an, an incredibly exciting year for us, you know, with the with the launch of of Now Pass Now Network. Um, you know, we we actually just announced uh, the Gateway Korea uh, in September, so we're actually bringing our flagship uh, event. Did you have you ever been to one of the gateways, Matt? I have not. No. Ooh, so we did it two years running in Miami, Basel. Um, first year was with Christie's, which was a little wild. It was like you know six month old startup partnering with a two hundred and seventy five year old auction house. It definitely right. opened some eyes. Um, but you know, it was it was really special. Um, we, uh, we built this whole immersive audio visual gallery. And then last year was wild because we actually, we partnered with Mana Common, MoonPay was the title sponsor, and we did a whole Web3 metropolis, took over in downtown Miami. It was five days. Um, it was two city blocks, 12 buildings, like in addition to all the usual wow. like Web3 suspects, like, you know, art blocks, G-Money's, 90CC, Artifact, all that. We also had... Christie's came back, but we also had like Instagram, we had Porsche, we had FaZe Clan, we had WME, like we brought a lot of like more legacy uh, into the space. And that's something that we're, that's like, we really want to, that's like, that's at our ethos is like, we're, we're not here to like, you know, um, we're not, we're not here to uh, kind of create barriers or to create like, this is just the new paradigm. And like, either you're with us or you're against us. It's more about it's always an and, not an or. Like yeah. digital and physical will always coexist. Like there's no need to be scared, you know? And if you want to learn more about this space, we're here to help you. Like education is at the forefront. One of the reasons why we founded NFT Now to begin with was to solve a problem that we ourselves faced, which was a lack of credible resources in the space. And, um, you know, like that's, and it's, it's been it's been really amazing to continue to see it, uh, see it forward. And I, I think the future is extremely bright. Uh, if there's going to be obviously, you know, the, the darkness of, of bear markets, there's going to be, you know, uh, challenges ahead, but you know, it takes conviction and it's clear that you it have conviction. conviction. You're thinking takes, things a different way. So it takes switching gears as we wrap up here, Matt, I mean, you yeah. obviously are somebody who you've had a really exciting career and you're clearly just getting started on what you're doing. Um, you know, it takes courage and along with conviction to do the sorts of things you're doing. 
what advice would you give to some of our younger listeners who want to go out on their own and create something like NFT now? What are the steps they should take to really get the, the courage to, to, to make that leap and to end up where, where you are today? It's a really great question. Um, I kind of live my life according to two principles. Um, stay open and don't force things. Pretty simple, but it's like most of the time you're either doing one of the one of one or the other you're either not being open-minded enough or you're forcing something that you've given you know the thought and so like that's something i think is really important it's important to be flexible like i mean look i i grew up reading spin magazine that was my favorite magazine but it's not like i set out to be like my career goal is to be the editor-in-chief of spin magazine right. that wasn't right. that, like if you had told young me about that i would be excited but that wasn't like i set that as like my north star or anything it was really about being being open-minded seeing opportunities not being afraid to pivot hard when i saw something like dance music taking over America. I was, you know, I don't know, I didn't, we didn't get into it because it's a whole backstory, but like I used to work in nonprofits and NGOs like prior to all that. And so I was actually finishing graduate programs related to that. And, but I, then when I saw dance music taking over America and I had this opportunity uh, to be that guy at Billboard, I pivoted hard and I have no regrets about that because I recognized that like there was, there was this, like there was a moment, you know, there was this window to be able to build something like that. Same thing with, with NFTs and Web3. Like when I left Modern Luxury, people thought I was crazy. That's a really cushy job. It's, you know, it's a great team. Um, and, you know, and I, and I left to go do an NFT media startup. What? Uh, people were checking in if I was okay. And those were the same people who a few months later were asking me what NFTs to buy. You know what I mean? And so what was really interesting is like, I think like having that conviction, not being afraid to, to, take, to take big swings, but ultimately you don't have to wait for those big swings to have at bats. Like there are a lot of like, like before like NFT, there are a lot of like things that I tried to start. Um, you know, like I had like a IG live, like podcast during COVID called studio break with artists checking into musicians. Like, you know, that ultimately like didn't really become anything, but it, 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 it basically walked so that the NFT now podcast could run. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. I've got through all my reps doing that and realized the challenge is what am I good at? What am I not? Like, what do I need support on? Oh, the editing, things like that. Like, you know, so I would, I always tell everyone, like, don't wait for like the right brand or the right opportunity to, do, to start creating, like start a, start a newsletter, start a podcast, start a, a Twitter space, to start putting yourself out there, start doing it. And you'll be able to attract attention and find things that like really, you're really, really passionate about. Like, yeah. you know, for me, it was like, it, you know, I was during, like when I first started like learning about Web3 and NFTs, I was up till 4am every night, like going down rabbit holes. Like right. when you find yourself doing that, like go down deeper, you know, like, yeah, that's amazing. Like, like just, just really, really like let, let, let that journey of discovery take you in. And also like, don't be too, um, don't, don't be too married to an idea around outcomes. Um, like have principles, but stay open-minded. Right. So yeah. like when, when, when I started the NFT now accounts on Twitter and Instagram, like I remember them the minute that, that it happened, and I was like, cool, nobody likes this. Like, I wonder if other people will, you know, uh, it was, I was like, you know, it's like starting from scratch, but ultimately I didn't know what it was going to become. I thought, yeah. you know, maybe it could be just like a pet project. It could be a curation channel, just like something to like, I was just posting about art that I was like, that I liked and I was discovering. And like, I was like, there's no credible resources here. I just want to like build something here, but I didn't know necessarily that it was going to take the trajectory that it has. But ultimately I knew that we wanted to do uh, to, to do things differently, that we wanted to build a better media model, all of these things. And so by building this out and realizing opportunities along the way, we're able to give this vision life and give it form. And one thing that I think is important too, is like, I, I always say, it's like, you know, there's a, there's a fine balance, like, like jump in, but for the big things, like also take the time to make sure you do it right. There's always time to make sure you do things right. Like, you know, it's like if you're not embarrassed by your first product, you launch too late. And when I look back at the early NFT Now podcasts and the, like, my, the, the newsletter, like I cringe, but that's OK. But sure. we waited. But we waited two years to launch. We didn't wait two years. We took two years to launch the Now Pass because we were doing tons of research. We, were, we had a front row seat to everything that was working, the things that were not working in the space. And we wanted to do something incredibly special and memorable. Like if you go check it out, it's not just like a normal like membership pass. It's like a fully generative on-chain artwork that has all of these in incredibly interactive, uh, engaging uh, elements to it. Tons of Easter eggs there. Tons of things we're building out. We're building out the member portal. Uh, and so like we, we knew we wanted to do something really, really special. And so, you know, we, we took the time it needed to do something very memorable. Um, so I think it's a really a balance of like not being afraid to like ship things and, and get your skin in the game while also understanding that while 
you may know your North Star, you may know your principles, the paths, especially when it comes to technology, innovation, et cetera, uh, are, they quickly change, you know, like yeah. look at AI, the rise of AI, like AI has been on my radar for a long time. I played around with it for a while, but over the past, it's, you know, I, I just got back from can it's all anybody could talk about out there as you can yeah. imagine. And one of the things that's really critical too, is like we embraced AI like earlier than most other media companies. And we did it incredibly transparently. You know, there's been a lot of like shadiness in the media space around AI, but, you know, and like we worked it into our editorial workflow. We made a, we made a whole thing out of it. We were like, Hey, this is our first AI powered editorial uh, news article. This is our first yeah. AI powered listicle. This is our first AI powered feature. We weren't like, we were, we, we were actually proud of it. And we actually earned platitudes from the AI community at large because of the way that we presented it. We, every, every article has a disclaimer that says, um, you know, editor's note, this was written by an NFT Now staff member in collaboration with GPT-4, in collaboration with Bard. All that, because that's what's really important. It's it's never like, oh, I'm copying this, I'm hitting publish, I'm calling it a day. There's always a human working with this tech. But what's amazing is we were also able to get our, our team on board with it. Like, right. I was able to assuage the fears, like, from my editorial team. I was like, hey, this is not here to replace you. You know, like we say, like we often say, it's like, it's not artificial intelligence, it's augmented intelligence. And yeah. what it's here to do is replace all the rote and routine things that, that humans don't like to do so that you can focus on the things that only humans can do. And it's been a, like a, a real smash success, you know, in terms of like opti of optimizing our workflows, um, increasing productivity, and, and, and the team actually really uh, has embraced it. But that's an example of something where, you know, a year ago, integrating AI into the workflow wasn't necessarily like one of my top priorities, but as soon as you could like see where the path was leaning, you, you, you have to be flexible too. You got to be nimble in the space Absolutely. Um, because, because it moves fast. I always say web three in weeks are months and months are years. So yeah. Well, you've definitely accomplished a lot in a short period of time, and I have no doubt that you're going to continue to innovate in this space and, um, you know, really excited to see what you're able to do to bring this to more mainstream and, and work with so many of the great brands that listen to Speed of Culture. So thanks so much for joining uh, today to Matt Medved, founder and CEO of NFT Now. On behalf of Susie and Adwee team, uh, please be sure to uh, subscribe, rate, and review the Speed of Culture podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Until next time, see you soon, everyone. Take care. Speed of Culture is brought to you by Suzy as part of the Adweek Podcast Network and A Guest Creator Network. You can listen and subscribe to all Adweek's podcasts by visiting adweek.com slash podcasts. To find out more about Suzy, head to suzy.com. And make sure to search for the Speed of Culture in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Click follow so you don't miss out on any future episodes. On behalf of the team here at Suzy, thanks for listening.